Good morning. Here we are again. Uh, another month has passed. It's now the 30th of September 2015. Time for another tour of my allotment. It's quite windy today so I hope that the wind is not too strong um, so you can't hear my dulcet tones. So let's start at the top of the plot and let's just come down. Right, since the last video I have cut back all the strawberry runners again and tidied up this bed. Uh, the next task on this bed which I will do today is to feed and turn the soil around the strawberry plants ready for next year and remove any strawberry plants that have been made by this year's runners. I think there's one or two there that I haven't actually taken up yet. So I'll be going across this bed turning, turning over the soil with just a small fork and feeding the ground. We'll move on to the the last video I removed my calabrese and also most of my cauliflowers as um, I've had the heads off of both of those plants um, there's just a couple left hopefully they'll produce some cauliflower heads and I dug over this little section and I'll be putting compost and manure on that a little bit later in the year. The, I mentioned I think on the last video about not having any white fly. There were some white fly on the brassica plants that finished uh, flowering like the cauliflower and the, cal and the calabrese. Um, there's a little bit on the brussels um, so I might actually have to spray those today because it's because a sort of a grey fly as opposed to the white fly. But anyway, I'll have a look at them in a little more detail. The cabbages are hearting up nicely. These are January King, as I mentioned before. So I might actually pick one of these today. The the Brussels sprouts are starting to form their sprouts. I don't know whether you can actually see that. But I think they do need spraying. They look a bit grey on the leaves. And then finally, the centre section here is my purple sprouting broccoli which seems in quite good condition you can see the some grey fl uh, silver fly um, white fly on the back of those leaves so I'll give them a spray today I think coming down the plot opposite the brassica cage I sowed some green manure in this section and I can't f see, see any Hungarian grazing rye. Now the reason I put this um, barrier across the top, I noticed pigeons were here every time I come down the allotment, there was pigeons walking over these beds where I've put my green manure. And I can't see any grazing rye anywhere. So either the seed was old, I bought the seed last year and used some last year and used some more this year but I can't see any so all I've got coming up at the moment is the winter tears or vetch as it's called 
also called Vetch. So the winter tears are coming, but there's not many now, there's so many in that one. Um, I've still got the carrots there. I've still got spinach, beetroot, runner beans and French beans. I've left the French beans to go to seed. But I'm still picking runner beans. This bed did contain uh, strawberry plants in this first little section where I planted four per square foot in 2013. Um, I've taken those up because they were too closely spaced. So I've gone for the square foot method of growing strawberries at one strawberry plant per one square foot. So last year the back section of this had the courgettes in and at the very end had runner beans. I've cleared those and I've covered that complete section with new runners from my other strawberry bed. So I've got now two strawberry beds ready for next year. Turning round, my tomatoes, I'm still picking tomatoes, they're coming on nicely. Uh, I'm making plenty of tomato soup at home because I've got far too many tomatoes again as usual. But they're doing fine. Moving along. Here I have my pumpkins and we'll go and have a close look at those. So I've got some honey bear. So I've managed to get two honey bear from that plant. Another honey bear there from that plant. Another two. And these were my sweet dumpling, as I mentioned before. These were taken from their seed, so they're reverting back to most probably the original grafting that they were taken from, because obviously they had the wrong size. But it'd be interesting to see what they're like. If I remember rightly, the sweet dumpling is an F1 variety, so it doesn't sort of uh, continue in its uh, parent form. It goes back a couple of generations. There's some more of those. I the first time I've noticed this. But this must be a runner from the tomatoes. And they give me some more. This is a side shoot that wasn't removed. Like I say, the tomatoes are fine. And I've got some pumpkins. I might clear those today. Swinging round. Still got this red onion growing. I want to save the seed from that and hopefully for next year. I've still got to dig this bed. I'm still picking runner beans and I froze a few bags of runner beans yesterday that I picked from here. But so still plenty of beans coming. So I've got a few more weeks yet to those. Coming back across. Again this bed was sown with green manure, Hungarian grazing rye and winter tears. And all I can see are the winter tears. So I think either the seed, as I mentioned before, 
has had it from the raising rye, that Hungarian raising rye grass, or the birds have eaten it. Comfrey's still growing nicely. Compost bins are getting filled up with rubbish. The asparagus is still green, so I'll leave that until it starts going brown. Once it goes brown, I will then cut that back. Rhubarb, still got plenty of rhubarb. Still harvesting plenty of raspberries. Autumn Bliss. I'm thinking of buying some Glen Amble raspberries, which were earlier, um, so I can start eating raspberries earlier in the year. Anyway, I'm thinking about that at the moment, um, and hopefully if I do buy them, I'll put them in by the end of November. Coming round again. This was where my potato crop was, and you may have seen my potato harvest, which was quite successful last year, uh, this year. But really, there's only two of us, we've got far too many potatoes, um, so I think I'll cut back a, a bit next year. I won't have quite so many. This bed, still the celeracs growing quite nicely. I've still got lettuce, the radishes have now finished, and I've got plenty of pop choy under the fleece, still to eat. Again, the green manure that was sown here, the raising, grazing rye has not shown, only the winter tears, so as mentioned before, I've got a problem with the seed, I think. Or black, or, or um, pigeons. Swinging round. Leeks are doing fine. And the parsnips are doing fine. Right, the last outdoor section is the new greenhouse that is now completed ready to house my plants or well, maybe my tomatoes in here next year and maybe a few other things and I'm going to grow them all in some buckets I'll explain about those in a minute but I just finished off by adding a bit of bark to the base Right, the last little section is the greenhouse. I've been picking cucumbers and tomatoes from in here. They're some really nice tomatoes. Um, so it's been worthwhile. I think the cucumbers are now fierce. I don't think I'll get any more on those. So I might start clearing some of this stuff away today. Now, what I've been thinking of doing is if you look down here, I've got two buckets, one inside the other, and if you look in there, I've had this, this soil is nice and moist. You can feel the moisture in that. And what I've done, based on a self-watering system, I've got a little hole there. As an overflow, I add water in that gap to top it up. And if I lift this out, I've got the wick on the bottom that is soaking up the water into this top bucket. So this has been a trial, and I think that's going to work as it's quite moist. Okay, obviously keep it covered on the top uh, so I'll be using this method or something based on this method for growing straw um, growing my 
tomatoes and other items in the greenhouse. And what I'll do, I'll keep these handles on, these buckets, and if I tie string to that, to the top of the greenhouses, then obviously you've got somewhere to climb up. Um, I bought these buckets from B&Q. They're a pound each. So I've got 40 of them. And that'll give me 20 growing containers to put in the two greenhouses. Um, so I think that's be big enough for tomatoes, peppers, and smaller items. I'll do something very similar. Um, but I'll be using what sort of containers I can find. But anyway, see how they go. I thought I'd just come into this untidy shed. You can see my 40 buckets I've purchased from B&Q. Another thing I just wanted to show you was all this comfrey feed. Now there's, there's no water in here at all. That's all pure feed taken from rotted comfrey. So that's going to save a bit of money in feed and fertiliser. And since the last visit you can see that's gone down quite a lot and that's quite moist in there. So there's a lot more there to be drained off which I'll do some of that today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short tour of my allotment for the month of September 2015. Don't forget to place, add any comments. Any likes or dislikes will be much appreciated. And thanks for all my regular viewers for helping by visiting my YouTube channel and most probably my website as well. Thank you very much and hopefully I'll see you again in October. Bye for now.